Okay, let's go ahead and practice our algebra skills. And I'm gonna kinda of keep it open-ended here uh, initially uh, because I want you to think about this problem. So here I have an equation and I'd like you to solve this algebra equation, all right? Solve for x. And uh, in order to solve this equation, you're gonna want to have, um, you know, you wanna be at like at the algebra one level, okay? So if you've taken you know, like a first year algebra course in high school or something along those lines or in college, then you should have uh, the skills to solve this problem. Certainly if you're at the uh, algebra two, college algebra level, you uh, will have the skills to solve this. But I'm gonna kinda keep it very general here in a second because I want you to think about this before um, you see me give you too many hints on this, um, how to solve this particular equation. But, you know, this is definitely the type of equation that you're gonna, you know, see on all sorts of different types of tests. So if you are taking algebra, you wanna stick around for a couple minutes and, you know, see if you can do this. And if you can't do this, you know, you watch, uh, you know, my solution and you go back and practice and review etc. So we're going to get into the solution to this equation in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math, or maybe you want to get ahead in math, you just, for whatever reason, you don't feel in alignment with uh, your current math situation. Okay, maybe you don't feel like you get enough math instruction, enough practice, enough explanation, or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style. Whatever the case might be, um, I've been teaching math for decades. I can help you out. What I really like to do is I like to break the components of um, all these math concepts that you study in algebra and other additional courses into bite-sized pieces that are super clear and understandable. That way, any and all students can learn this. Of course, you're going to want to... Uh, you know, have the desire to learn and put in the work. But if you have the desire, I think I have the right uh, teaching style for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have fantastic homeschool math courses and curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. But uh, just know this, if you want great grades in math, you have to take your own personal excellent math notes. All right, so let's get into this problem. Okay, so the first thing is this. What type of equation is this? Okay, what type of equation is this? So if you know the answer to that, go ahead and put that in the comment section, but I'll give you a hint. It starts with the Q. All right, this is a quadratic equation, and we know that because when I multiply this X times this X, I'm gonna end up with an X squared. All right, so this is gonna be right here. X times X is X squared. X times two is gonna be two X. So the highest power of X is going to be x squared. So by definition, I'm, I'm dealing with what we call a second degree polynomial equation, i.e. a quadratic equation. So you're going to have to know the different techniques to solve a quadratic equation. And there's a uh, more than a few various techniques that you need to know. Okay, so again, in Algebra 1, first year algebra, uh, uh, first year algebra class, certainly a second year algebra class, you will have studied and mastered the various techniques to solve quadratic equations. Now, I will say that quadratic equations can have uh, different type of solutions. Now, you can have solutions under what we call the real number set uh, or the complex and imaginary or the complex number system or what we call imaginary roots. Okay, so if you're not uh, yeah, really up to speed on complex or imaginary new, uh, roots, well, I'll address that a little bit later on in the problem. But right now, okay, if you've studied quadratic equations, go ahead and see if you can solve this. I've already told you that this is a quadratic equation. So think about this problem in terms of, okay, it's a quadratic equation. How do I solve quadratic equations? Well, let's get in to this real quick. So let's just talk about quadratic equations just as a hint. So just real basic, when you're dealing with quadratic equations in algebra, uh, there's different things that you could possibly do to solve. Sometimes you can take the square root of both sides of an equation, okay? Sometimes you can factor, all right, so factor. 
uh, to solve now. I'm just quickly go reviewing these things. If you don't really know what I'm talking about, I have tons of videos about quadratic equations in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. But of course, I teach this super thoroughly in my algebra courses as well, my in my math help program. So sometimes you can sometimes you can take the square root of both sides and solve. Sometimes you can factor, but when we can't take the square root of both sides, when we can't factor to solve, then we have to uh, use something called the quadratic formula. Okay, and a longer version of the quadratic formula is something called completing the square. Okay, but you really have to be really good at using a quadratic formula. And uh, so anyways, these are kind of the four main techniques you need to know about quadratic equations. Now, I also told you you're always going to have two solutions. I don't know if I told you there was always going to be two solutions, but I'm telling you now, there's always going to be two solutions. And those solutions can uh, either be uh, real numbers or complex numbers, okay, imaginary numbers. All right. So this is kind of the, the general setup. So when you're thinking about this problem, you know, you want to be thinking about everything you've learned about quadratic equations, and hopefully, you know, you've learned all of this stuff. So if, uh, you know, you forgot this, well, let me go ahead and review this with you right now. So if you're not ready to see the solution, pause the video because I'm going to solve the problem right now. All right, so let's get into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and solve it. Uh, if you're confused about any of these things I'm talking about with quadratic equations, follow through after this video. Go learn more about quadratic equations. If you like my teaching stuff, again, I have tons of uh, tons of videos on quadratic equations and practice. But let's get into this particular problem now. All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, do the distributor property. So I have these parentheses, so let's multiply this x in. So this x times that x is going to be x squared. This x times that 2 is 2x. So that was the first step you saw me take. Now... What you want to do, uh, once you've done that, in any uh, quadratic equation, is you want to set it equal to zero, okay? I'm going to have three terms here, and this is not a situation where I can take the square root of both sides. So, again, there's a lot of variety of different types of quadratic equations. So, but this particular one, I have, so I have x squared, I have x's, I have numbers. So, nothing's kind of obvious in terms of what other techniques. So, that what you want to do is start moving everything to one side and set this equation equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to move this x over to this uh, this side of the equation. I'm going to subtract x from both sides of the equation. That gives me x right there. And then I have this 10. I have a negative 1. So what I can do is I can add 1 to both sides of the equation. So when I add 1 with this 10, I get 11. Okay, so hopefully all of you out there can see how I went from here to here. Okay, so I move the 1 over to this side of the equation by adding 1 to both sides of the equation. I get that 11, and I subtracted x from both sides of the equation. I get that x. Okay, so it leaves me with x squared plus x plus 11 equals 0. So this is my quadratic equation. It's set equal to 0, but more importantly, it's in what we call standard form. Okay, I have my highest power first, so that's my x squared term, and then I have my middle power which is x to the first in the middle, and then I have my number last, okay? And when you have uh, your quadratic equation written in this form, we can look at what we call the coefficients, okay? The number in front of the x squared term is, uh, is going, in this case, it's 1, but this is going to be referred to as our a value, okay? The number in front of the middle term, okay? In this case, it's 1 as well. That's our B value, and then our number by itself is our C value, right? So this comes from this format, AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. This is a general quadratic uh, equation written in standard form, okay? We want these A, B, C powers because when I'm looking at this equation, uh, 1X squared plus 1X plus 11, I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, can I take the square root of both sides? No, okay, I can't do that. Can I factor this, all right? Well, you need to know how to factor trinomials, but I'm telling you right now, nope, you can't factor this as well. And hopefully you are coming to this conclusion and you can see, well, then I'm kind of um, you know, forced to use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So if you know the quadratic formula, okay, go ahead and... Uh, you know, uh, plug in these respective ABC values, but I'm going to show you that some of you may have forgotten or like, you know, the quadratic formula, but you just don't remember it right now. So let's go ahead and show you 
the quadratic formula, and here it is. This is something that I would encourage you to memorize. Okay, certainly if you're uh, studying quadratic equations in uh, your class right now, your teacher isn't going to give you this on a test. You're likely going to have to just remember this. But this is something I would um, put into your long-term memories. But here is the quadratic formula. X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Again, what are these A, B, and C values? They come from the coefficients of the uh, quadratic equation once it's written in standard form. Okay, so in this case, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 11. So I'm going to pl uh, plug in and replace with these respective A, B, C values with these values right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so X is equal to minus B again here. Uh, let me go up a little bit. All right, so B is equal to 1, so that's going to be minus 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared, or 1 squared, one squared minus 4 times A. A is 1, so I'm going to plug in 1, and then C is 11. Okay, now that's going to be all over 2A, or 2 times 1. So this is the setup. Now, when you're setting up uh, your... Um, quadratic equation okay, to, to solve, and you plug in all your values, do not immediately start uh, working this problem down. Okay, The first thing you want to do is, once you plug in your values, is double check. Okay, Double check that you plugged everything correctly, because um, you know half the time you're going to be like, ooh, I plugged in the wrong number, or I did this, you know, I, I made some sort of error. So double, triple check that you got everything plugged in correctly. You got the right formula, you got the right values, and everything is plugged in nice and correctly into the formula before you start simplifying. Okay, so this is a habit you want to get into. But once you are confident that, okay, no, I got everything plugged in correctly, now you can start focusing in on simplifying this math. All right, so let's go to do that now. So we got negative 1 or minus 1 plus or minus 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 times 11, 4 times 1 times 11 is 44, okay, 4 times 1 times 11 is 44, or 4 times uh, 11, 44. So I have 1 minus uh, 44 two uh, over 2 times 1, or 2, okay? So I'm kind of simplifying one little thing at a time. Don't try to do too much in one step, okay? You could take a couple steps and then continue to simplify. So now I have well, minus 1 plus or minus the square root. 1 minus 44 is negative 43 all over 2. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, uh, hopefully uh, some of you out there recognize, hopefully all of you recognize, that we have an, a problem here, okay? If I go in and take the square root of negative 43 in my calculator, if I have this basic calculator, I'm going to see an error. Well, now, why is that? Because this is not a real number, okay? This is a an imaginary number. This is imaginary or part of the complex number system. So... You could, have, uh, you could have given me this answer a couple of different ways. If you are not at the stage of um, uh, learning about imaginary numbers, you could have just said, this uh, quadratic equation has no real roots, okay, no real solutions. But better than that, okay, you could be like, oh, okay, I can simplify this square root of negative 43 by pulling out this I, this little imaginary part right there. And this right here is the actual solution, okay? X is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 43 I over 2. Now, let's talk about this plus or minus right here, okay? There's two solutions. The first solution here is negative 1 plus a square root of 43 I over 2, okay? And then our second solution is going to be negative 1 minus the square root of 43 I over 2, okay? So this plus and minus right here is just kind of a shortcut notation so we don't have to write out both um, solutions. They're, they're the same numbers. We could just uh, indicate, you know, kind of uh, couple these together by this plus or minus, but just know that this little uh, notation right here, it really means these two unique solutions, all right? So these are your two respective solutions. Remember when you're, you're talking about quadratic equations, we're talking about two solutions. All right, so how many of you out there got this right? Man, if you got this correct, I must go ahead and give you a nice happy face with a good old 1983 Mohawk. Let's throw in some uh, colors there just to make it like extra souped up. 
Uh, that was a popular haircut back in the day, believe it or not. Matter of fact, let me give it an A plus and 100%. That was pretty impressive. We got this all right. Um, but you know what? I'm real. I'm glad to see that people don't wear the hair like this anymore. It just took too much uh, hairspray, and um, you know, in my opinion, I guess when you're younger, a lot of things look uh, cooler. But uh, anyways, nice job. Okay, very impressive. But here's the deal: if you um, you know, didn't know how to solve a quadratic equation, you need to go back and re um, kind of follow my little uh, graphic organizer right here. All right, you need to know the big picture about quadratic equations. Remember, they're going to have two solutions. Sometimes they're going to be real number solutions. Sometimes they'll be complex number solutions. No way to know in advance. You have to start, um, you know, uh, working on the problem. And there's all different types of techniques. You know, sometimes you can take the square root of a size. Sometimes you can factor. All these are important. Sometimes you have to use a quadratic formula. And uh, you need to also know the completing uh, how to use uh, the, uh, the procedure called completing the square, okay? So all this stuff is important, and there's even more things you need to know about quadratic equations. That's why, you know, there's just too much to know in math for you not to be taking great math notes, okay? you got to be taking all these little details down, writing them down, reviewing them, etc., and, uh, you're, you know, without practice, you're never going to master this stuff. So hopefully this was a fun little uh, problem and a good review for those of you out there. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math all the way to calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the videos that I have posted and will be posting. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.